We want to say thank you to our sponsors, Watchman Cigars, Operation Decisive Victory, Webmerized, and Red Hill Brewing. Without you, this episode would not be possible. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast, where it's our take on life, liberty, and the pursuit of gravy. While you, the listener, are invited to come up on the front porch, grab a beverage, and set a spell. We've got a great show lined up for you, as always. But before we begin, let me introduce you to our starting lineup, the best three-on-three basketball team you've ever seen in your entire life. (laughs) <laughs> uh, we've got uh, Magic Man playing shooting guard today. Um, he will, he mans the chats, the Facebook Live, the video streams, all of that stuff, and shooting a respectable three. What up, Magic Man? Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, our center is going to be Brian, producer Brian. He will uh, guard everything. He blocks the rim and does all that he can to keep those folks from scoring. <laughs> it's our producer, Brian. Yeah, I'm a... Uh... The five second violation, like constantly. <laughs> and you like to foul, evidently. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of that. I have a tendency to double <laughs> dribble. <laughs> oh, that that works on the court and off the court for you, Magic yeah. Man. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'd be, of course, your point guard, your illustrious co host. Uh, Biggin, and how about you? Uh, again, we've got a great show. Uh, our guest, our special guest tonight is Gwen Traversy. She uh, is with Lutheran Services for Children, and uh, she's going to tell her story about being a foster kid and a parent, and so uh, you'll want to stay on the show for that. But before we begin, let producer Brian tell us where you can find us on all of our socials. Yes, we are on the Facebook at Southern Fried Philosophy, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch at SFP Radio. We're on YouTube, but uh, don't make me do it, but we're on YouTube nope, also. Yep. Um, yep. You can always email the show, sfpradio at gmail.com. If you want to support us, uh, use our Patreon link, patreon.com slash SFP Radio, and we're streaming on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and the TuneIn app. Yep. Uh, again, we're going to ask you that if you would like to su- help support the show, one thing we really need you to do, we don't have any money to do, um, you know, these advertising and all that kind of stuff. So marketing, whatnot. So please just, you know, tell your friends about it. We would really appreciate that. Any episode that you like, please just, uh, you know, rate it, review it, subscribe to all of us on, on all of those socials. That would help us out as well. It'll help us move up in the algorithms. And again, please, please, please tell your friends about it. Uh, I know you might secretly like the show and it could be like your, your addiction podcast that you don't want to tell anybody about, but if you are proud of the show, please tell your friends, family, whatnot about it. We've got some um, summer coming up, you know, listen to the show. You're at the pool, having a beverage. What else could be better than that? So you want to tell your friends about that so they can also enjoy it. That would be great. Uh, also just, if you have some extra time, go over to YouTube, find us somehow through the Gobbledy Gook. Just type in SFP Radio, subscribe, turn off the notifications, and that would help us move up in the algorithms as well. Uh, if you're staying at home and you want to do your own podcast, because why not? Because everybody else is. Uh, <clears throat> I went through the drive through the other day at Hardee's, got my little sausage biscuit. The guy said, thanks for coming to Hardee's and listen to my podcast. I was like, oh boy, everybody's got one these days. Um, but if you need somebody to edit it, producer Ryan will do that. Shoot him an email at headlines at SFP radio, uh, audio, video. Uh, what's that? What's that app? You pay me to talk to you. You can do that. I will see. <laughs> the only fans. Do you edit the only fans accounts? I don't judge, man. <laughs> Maybe we need an only fans subscription. That's, oh, there we go. You make there, a lot of money there it is. <laughs> Uh, yeah, shoot up producer Brian at headlines at SFP radio. If you'd like to be a show sponsor and get your name called out at the beginning of the show and throughout the show, we would appreciate that. Email me at SFP radio at gmail.com. I want to say shout out to our listeners from old Massachusetts. Boy, that's a, that's a long state name. But it's a tiny state. That's what's really funny. 
like you can drive the whole thing in two hours. It's like the longest I name can't imagine. State. Probably... Yeah. I can't imagine going from state for two and a half hours. You can still be in North Carolina and be in two and a half hours. That's like 10 hours across the state. If you go from the, from more, if you go from the, like the outer banks, you know, all the way to mm -hmm. Tennessee border it takes forever. Yeah. I, I spent some time in Massachusetts a long time ago and we were staying in like a, it was fall before the ski slopes open. We had like a town timeshare, but we drove to Boston twice in that time period from like for a day trip because it was only like a, a two hour it was two hour ride in the morning oh wow and it was nothing to go to boston from the mountains of massachusetts goodness anyway. <clears throat> well, there you go listeners from massachusetts thank you for tuning in i appreciate mm -hmm. that uh i'm gonna ask you like i ask you guys every week magic man how you be doing i'd be doing good and uh we're actually getting some uh chats from folks listening to us on twitch and uh, I don't think what? these are people that are normal listeners. So I'm... Mm. What guess up, we Twitch? Like food. Yeah. That's the question. Yes. <laughs> How'd you guess? <clears throat> yeah. How are you doing, Twitchies? Yeah. What do you call Twitchers? Do you call them I think, Tweakers? I think that was it, maybe. Twitchers? <laughs> I'd be interested to know. <laughs> Twitcheroos. <laughs> uh, well, good. I'm glad Magic Man is finding his people on the Twitch. <laughs> 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 producer brian how you be doing um i'm good you know i feel like it's been a while since i've been on the show but it's only been it's yeah it's if you're like just listening weeks, in right? order it's been no time because right. nothing got recorded last week yeah. <laughs> uh I, I did a little beach vacation right so the, you know two weeks ago was it two weeks ago last episode how was that last episode we had a guest on david page producer of the first half of you know first what 10 seasons or so of uh, 11 diners, seasons yeah. 11 uh, diners drivings and dives wrote a book food americana a great book i read about half of it i was on vacation at the beach read a chapter on i basically read the barbecue chapter I remember that one you know, <laughs> and the yeah. fried chicken chapter and the mexican-american like it was really interesting but it, uh -huh. it inspired me to try some yep. local restaurants while I was mm -hmm. at the beach, right? So it was like a Thursday night. We were already planning on ordering out. So I door dashed. There were two barbecue places on DoorDash that were close by. And one okay. of them was like number two on every single list that I looked okay. at. So I didn't order from them. Oh. Because they because there was the variety. They just served, they had pulled pork, like sandwiches, and that's about it, right? So Ooh, I'm like, okay. okay, well, I'd like to have a little more variety. I want some different sides. Uh, the other restaurant had like all the things, ribs, okay. brisket, you name it. All so right. I got ribs and pulled pork and like Brunswick stew and call it, I ate well from a quantity standpoint. I mean, it oh, might be no. the worst barbecue I've ever had in my entire life. Whoa. So I was a little disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And this place was not recommended by David Page, just to be clear. No, no, this is not, no affiliation. <laughs> he inspired me to go eat local while I was out of town, you know, as you yeah. do. And then I was thoroughly disappointed. So I'm no sauce you, you on the ribs. Through. Like it wasn't ribs, they weren't seasoned. There was no rubs. They had the membrane was still on there. It was just like. Oh, that's trash, man. It was just, yeah, the, uh, yeah it wasn't appropriate to be sold to people as far as I'm concerned, but. <laughs> I will um, say you read that book and you get hungry because it oh, talks yeah. about all the different foods. And you're like, man, that sounds good. No, that sounds good. No, that sounds good. Yeah. So. I, I, the next chapter is the wing chapter. So I'm going to wait till it's like 50 cent wings somewhere before I read that. So I don't spend too much money. That's a good call. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good call. Um, what on your wings, do you prefer the flats or the drumsticks? Uh, I don't typically discriminate too much with the flats or, preferred for me because i can get more magic man. Off of them. i'm sorry i'm having some fascinating conversations here with uh some folks uh listening <laughs> into us so all right we actually have we'll let you let we have one guy right, go ahead. Uh, who's listening to us uh, from twitch or watching us from twitch okay uh, he's from germany what and, and he says oh. he's really interested in, in uh, american culture well buddy you're in the right place yeah and then we have another guy <laughs> or another person from juan land and I said, where's that near? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Lee Short says, oh, no, I'm sorry for the bad barbecue. 
Hungary. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hungary. Hungary. Speaking of Hungary, that's the other yeah. thing we like. Uh, so, wow. Okay. He what said, what time is it? Mobile autocorrect. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hungary. It's, you know, we're on the East Coast. It's almost eight o'clock. I Germany, England. Hungary, if I get my world geography right, that's got, they're at least six, seven hours ahead of us, yeah. right? Yeah. The, uh, what You guys need to go to bed. It's too late, right? <laughs> no, we want them to listen. Listen, guys. It's like 1.40 a.m. Yeah, hey, Downloads. Yeah. Like, it's, did it, you look it up? Yeah. What is it? Yeah. 1.40 a.m. Man. You twitchers, man. You tweakers. <clears throat> I'm telling you what, you're doing great. Stay up with us. We appreciate it. Yep. And we, we talk about southern culture so hey you want to, to to learn something stick around we'll we'll uh we'll learn you something <laughs> you will <laughs> learn you something hey you twitchers again if you didn't get it at the beginning make sure you go to uh you know find us on your podcast aggregate and subscribe we would really appreciate that and then uh, you can go to southernfriedphilosophy.com and uh, you can listen to the episodes there but please make sure you rate or review subscribe and all of our socials that would be great uh, um so, producer Brian, didn't you also have a beer you wanted yeah, to review? Yeah, so on the uh, bright side, uh, a couple of weeks ago, the folks at Red, Bill, uh, Red, blah, 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 Red Hill Brewing <laughs> um, released their Yabba Dabba Brew, which is a hazy IPA infused with, uh, the. I think the advertising says, fruity rice cereal. But right, for, you can't. It's, it, it's trademarks and copyright right. and all that. But I saw the pictures; it was fruity pebbles, like <laughs> the real thing, the big, big bags of fruity pebbles. So, I'm yeah. a big fan of the fruity pebbles, as you may or may not know. Mm-hmm. So, I uh, I needed to have that. So, I made arrangements, got a four pack, and uh, you know, it's one of those beers you think like either it sounds interesting or it sounds disgusting, right? Right on the on face value. But I really liked it. Um, nice. I was, I was talking to Chris about last night, and maybe I was doing it wrong, but the it's a pint can, so 16 ounces. The first 15 ounces are really good, okay. But it's an unfiltered beer, so the last ounce is all hops. Oh, and, okay. And so, wow. Um, I learned hey, pretty quickly that, yeah, so you need to pour it in a cold glass, it needs to be cold. Very, I really like this fruit, it is, it's just, it was just good, really. A refreshing beer but that last ounce is like just eating bread pepper flakes Ooh, <laughs> it's like oh what's that uh, you don't that's not a good that's not a good experience yeah it's not a good, great way to finish so i i don't don't you know don't take take the whole can back when you're done like get a rude, swirl rude it liquor. around keep it mixed up yeah yeah I, like, i'll pick it up before i i'll just kind of like, do the can up and down just so it yeah. kind of moves around a bit more so yeah uh i think Hey, uh, big and uh, J- Lee Short says, uh, "Tell you that you forgot to call him." <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh. We'll talk about this off air, but I called you and you didn't pick up. So, mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, <laughs> I called you back. Check your phone history. Uh, but next month on Red Hill, they're having the cocoa for cocoa puffs, or some. They're using cocoa puffs in their porter, so that should be interesting as well. <clears throat> that does sound good. Um, all right, so let, let's go to our southern phrase of the week, which is um, till the cows come home. You guys have heard this before. Oh, yeah. Sit back because this could take all day. Cows, and including myself, are not known for their speed. They usually meander about until feeding time. A southerner knows that if you're going to talk about something till the cows come home, it's going to take all day. So the uh, phrase might be, they will be arguing about this until the cows come home. You guys have heard that before, I'm mm-hmm. sure, living in the South, till the cows come home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, I think, Producer Ryan, you said our guest was uh, in the waiting room. Do we want to bring her on? Yeah, we can do it. We can do that. And then we'll still go through our, our topics and just have sure. her okay. join Sounds in good. as well. All right, Genevieve, are you with us? Hello, can you see me? 
I can hear you. We can't see you. Okay. All right. Let me see. What am I doing wrong here? Oh, start video. Sorry. <laughs> start video. There you go. Oh, hi, guys. Hello. Hey. hey, how are you doing? Good. I'm going to apologize ahead of time if you hear dogs barking, kids screaming. Um, yeah, my house is full. So. <laughs> <laughs> Quite understand that. I'm the exact opposite. My wife uh, and little one are gone for... They've, they've been gone for since Saturday. So uh -huh. it's been ex the exact opposite. It's been so quiet. It scares me at night. I'm like, it's so, what's going on? Cause it's, it's way too quiet. <clears throat> the first time I've ever done the show with my office door open. So uh, yeah, it's, it's very yeah. quiet. I was just listening to you guys on my phone um, in the kitchen. And I was like, Oh, I'm in the waiting room. Let me go back. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it was cool. I love that you guys were talking. Well, I'm Genevieve, by the way. So hey, I know Genevieve. it's hard to pronounce, but <laughs> Jenny, <laughs> if you can't say Genevieve. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be here. And you guys were talking about Massachusetts. I was born there. Um, oh, wow. Many places in Massachusetts. So um, if you hear my husband, he has a Bostonian accent, but mine is more, I say, proper. <laughs> yeah you don't say the car right no i mean when i get around my people you know it comes out but um, yeah. and that's so funny because like when my wife is my wife's from south georgia and and she has a southern accent but i can always tell when she's with like her sister or her mom because at that point it really starts getting dragged out and i'm like oh like you've been around your people Right. And when you're around your people, that accent comes back pretty quick, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I grew up in a very, um, <sighs> lots of different cultures where I grew up. And it, it was called Lawrence, Massachusetts. Well, it is still called Lawrence, Massachusetts. <laughs> and um, and I a lot of the population that lived around me was um, Hispanic. So okay. um, my accent becomes Bostonian Hispanic. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so, the rolling of the tongues and <laughs> <laughs> very cool uh gonna do you want to hang out with us or um and we can do the rest of our stuff or would you yeah yeah i'll sit and back and watch and um yeah okay all right well, gentlemen, we've got a couple of uh, stories that we'd like to kind of touch base on. So we've got, here's our topics for tonight. The North Carolina Lottery. <clears throat> Producer mm. Brian has some dad jokes. Do not. I want to discuss yard sales. Uh, a man gets hit by a stray bullet. <clears throat> um, North Carolina has access or excess revenue in human organic composting. Human organic composting. Which one do you want to start off with tonight? Hmm. I want to hear some dad jokes. Sorry, I know this is all yeah. right. Let's no, go that's to great. Dad jokes. <laughs> hey, we weren't getting right. anywhere, so you got us going. So that's good. <laughs> awesome. that's, all right. Well, this uh, you know this weekend is Father's Day, as we record this. So I figure, what better way to celebrate fatherhood than dad jokes, right? Absolutely. I love dad jokes way more uh, than I so should. Great idea. I've got uh, 145 here ready to go. Okay. So I don't know what my time limit is, but we're going to want to kick through some it's of these. It's not all and, uh, 145. At some give, point, just give keep me the best me. 10. Yeah, 10. <laughs> I don't know the best 10. I'm gonna, we'll go through a few of these, though. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, my wife said I should do lunges to stay in shape. That would be a big step forward. <laughs> um, I love that. Yeah. So what do you call a fish wearing a bow tie? Ooh. Sophisticated. Oh, oh sophisticated. Mm -hmm. um, oh, how do you follow Will Smith in the snow? This one's for Biggin. Oh, no. You know I love Will Smith. I know. Ooh, I don't know, man. You follow how the Fresh you... Prince. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, that's great these, these are the coral yeah if april showers bring may flowers what do may oh. flowers bring may allergies oh. <laughs> pilgrims pilgrims mayflower like the boat oh. yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 okay uh let's see what did the ocean say to the beach 
I don't know. Nothing. It just waved. <laughs> I only know 25 letters of the alphabet. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, These are cute. She got but, it. She man. got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, where do fruits go on vacation? Paris. That's, that one's pretty terrible. Uh, I don't get that one. Pear. Yes, yeah, pear. Oh, like the pear. fruits of pear. Yeah. Oh, um, what's right. the best thing about Switzerland? Our international Jeez. friends. Um, I don't know, but the flag is a big plus. Um, <laughs> let's go through. Nice. There's different categories here, these things. Okay. Do we have any food categories besides um, the pear on? Here's some one liners to see. When two vegans get in an argument, is it still called a beef? Um, <laughs> if two what gets an argument? If two vegans get in an argument. Vegans. Is it still called a beef. Oh, yeah. I heard biggins. I you said biggins. I That's what I heard too. I heard biggins. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's too big. Yeah. Uh, I ordered a chicken and an egg from Amazon. I'll let you know. Uh, gosh. Which comes first? Which you know, sure, uh, yeah, I got you. Chicken, yeah, yeah. Um, that car looks nice, but the muffler seems exhausted. <laughs> Can't. These are there's so many here. Uh, all right, give me the last I, one. I, let me find one, one really good. One, if I can find, I, I didn't read all these earlier, but uh, well, yeah, clearly some somebody did their show prep. Who has that kind of time, right? <laughs> um, what is what's brown and sticky? I could tell you, but this is a family show. So. <laughs> I could go a bunch of different ways there. Yeah. <laughs> a stick. What is it? Yeah, what is it? A stick. A stick. A stick. A stick. Yeah. Oh, got right. you. A sticky. Yeah. What do you call two monkeys that share an Amazon account? Last one. Ooh, I don't know. They're primates. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, oh, oh. I'm done. Thank you. I'm You'll done. be here all night. Yep. <laughs> be sure to tip your waitress. Um, so the last show we talked about the West Virginia lottery, they their vaccine lottery. And then uh, all of a sudden, and when we gave Governor Rory Cooper some of our ideas <clears throat> of what would be a great lottery for North Carolina, he did not listen to any of our suggestions. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have gotten your vaccine vaccination, <clears throat> you're now entered to win a $1 million dollar prize and there will be four drawings um coming out so i mean i guess ohio you know they were the the first but like it seems like all these states now are doing the vaccination lotteries oh it was so successful because mm -hmm. like the percentages jumped up so high right yeah they ohio. really so yeah but we're only giving four million dollars away like what in the world like why are we i feel like we could do better yeah, sure. Four. Um, yeah, and, uh, and I'll kind of bleed that into, so North Carolina, because of everybody coming back, <clears throat> things are, are rolling again. It, it, sound, it shows that in two years, we're going to have a $6.5 billion excess of money for the state. $6.5 billion with a B, -b, -b, -b uh, excess of money coming in. So, y'all, that's a lot of money. And so right now they're figuring out, well, what do we do with it? Um, so do we lower taxes? Do we give it back? I, I don't know, man, do but that seems like state employees more. That might be a good option. You know, <laughs> fix the, the roads. Because it sucks to be a teacher. So why don't you, you know, throw some dollars that way, right? Yep. Yeah. Fix the uh, roads and I'm wide, sure. widen them where yeah. these uh, developers keep building. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Genevieve, I'm sure you would say help with the foster care system and help increase that, right? Oh, for sure. I mean, I, I, I can throw out statistics, but we have 400,000, over 400, 428,000 in the United States kids in foster care. Wow. So um, over 100,000 are waiting for homes like to be adopted, like there's enough there going. But we have too many, so many foster kids, especially teenagers in our state right now. People are getting puppies during the pandemic and buying new cars and mm. all this but we have these kids literally sleeping in the office, you know? So anyways, I can talk more about that after, but yes, I agree. It can go more toward housing um, these children. 
Yeah. I mean, there's, there's so many things that we could do with it, but you know, they tax us relentlessly here in North Carolina. Um, but yeah, I just, I thought 6.5 billion over the next two years, that is a, a swollen amount of cash coming in. So do you um, notice how expensive groceries are too right now? Oh, oh yeah. absolutely. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna come. I mean, everybody's getting their, and I don't want to be political, but I mean, we're getting all of our cash money coming in, but things are going to start really inflating to yeah, the moon. So we're already seeing inflation. Yeah. Yep. That's why I just um, got rid of my suburban and I got a car that's way better on gas because I'm like, I can't afford this gas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking about having a bad day uh there's a, a north carolina man that was just having dinner in greensboro and uh he was just eating dinner at the uh, sheffield country club mind you and uh, on tuesday evening and evidently a stray bullet came and it hit him in the head just a stray bullet just eating just boom popped him in the head he said that uh it was just a superficial wound on the top of the head minor injuries he declined to be treated by the medics but uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you are <laughs> firing your weapon up in the air, that bullet has got to come down at some point. So mm-hmm. please make sure you know where that bullet will land and hopefully not uh, in some guy's head at the country club while he's eating dinner. So wow. goodness, y'all. That's insane. Lucky, lucky for him, though, it could yeah. have been a whole lot worse. Uh, do you guys do yard sales? Um, okay. Okay. Genevieve yeah. says yes. Yeah. Oh, I love yard Keep sales. Going. Everything around me is from a yard sale, including this couch. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love yard sales. The, the chair so, this, was, this is on is from a yard sale. Like I love everything about yard sales. <laughs> so there's garage sales, which I'm assuming like those are garage sales, like are in an actual garage. And then you have yards. No. What are you saying, Bruce? I think the some like I, yard sales and garage sales to me, it's like, is it a, uh, a submarine or a grinder sandwich? Is it like it's regional? Is the or way a hokey? Like, okay. I think folks from maybe <laughs> a little farther north may be more inclined to call it a garage sale. Maybe mm. not, but in my experience, <laughs> that's what I've heard. But huh. here's the yard. We didn't have a garage. And I, well, I have a okay. garage now, but we don't let people walk in my garage. Well, because I'm not yeah. selling anything in my garage. You can't have anything out of my garage. So yeah. <laughs> it's a well, yard when sale. I was growing up, I, I would go out with my dad a lot, and they would be in the garage, like anything that would set up in the garage. And so that's why I thought that's probably why they call it a garage mm-hmm. sale. And then when it overflowed out into the yard, I thought that was the yard sale. And then we were selling everything except the house. That was the estate sale. So – that's how I put it together. Well, but it's now is like good. after, uh, you know, that's like cleaning the house after your grandma dies or something. Right. right? I mean, yep. you sell everything yep. in the house that after you divvied up the good China or whatever. Yeah. I right. always feel sad about that. Like, yes. Yeah. Hmm, Usually sad. Involved, but. Yeah. Well, it's that time of year where I go down the street and I see yard sale, yard sale, yard sale. I didn't know if you guys go to yard sales. I would love to get up and go to a yard sale, but small batch uh, is not yeah. old enough. I don't want to get her and then get her in and so out and all early. that kind of stuff. Like the, but they the are serious early. yard sale people get up. They're it's like, insane. you're still setting your table up and they're on your top of you. Like trying oh, to get yeah. whatever spatulas yeah. you're selling or whatever. I don't know. But Yeah. I remember yeah. Uh, doing yard sales with my parents growing up a couple times when we moved and, um, you know, we would say it starts at seven. We'd be out there at six o'clock setting up and people already pulling up to our driveway <laughs> wanting to, to know if we had anything out yet. I mean, yeah, they're hardcore. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, you, you know, we're down in downtown Concord and they have the historic, um, yard sale down on union and man, it's a festival down there. It's like a parade because people think, Oh, all the rich people are getting rid of all their stuff and you go down there and they're just massive lines and people just walking up. I mean, it looks like an Ikea, you know, <laughs> store with people carrying their big bags and everything else. Yeah. It's nuts. So it gets, gets it gets crazy this time of year. <laughs> with yard sales is the haggling. Like, you know, I've got mm. this something out there for like five bucks, right? Why are you trying to negotiate <laughs> Off of, like down to fifty cents off of my five dollar, whatever <laughs> right. my salad because bowl. Because it's supposed or to be ten percent of what it's worth brand new. That's why. Is that that's, un- 10, yeah, that's oh, how it goes. There's that's a rule. 
We just, Very I just cool. went, uh, yeah, this I know all the rules. Dollar. This is $5. <laughs> this is, you know, it's 10%, 10 to 20. Wow. Depending. Yeah. Unless it's like never been used. That's made up. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> so the rule is like when you're at a garage sale, whatever you're selling is 10 to 20% off of what it is new, even though it's been used. Not off 10 to 20% of oh, the price. Oh, the value of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Huh. Uh. Maybe that's why, yeah, we need to work on our negotiating skills then. <laughs> huh. I think some people just try to negotiate everything. So that's. Yeah. No, that's true. <laughs> and if you bring kids with you, I mean, usually they end up giving you some stuff away for free. So, you yeah. know. I mean, that would be a great plug. Yeah, That'd be a great plug for adoption. <laughs> it's just yeah. bring a kid with you. <clears throat> yeah. Get discounts <laughs> off garage sales. <laughs> Foster, come on. We actually do have incentives that we're starting to do. It's, you know, uh, and I feel bad, like, but it, I think it's great that we have this access now. It's $150 incentives if you sign up to Foster. And I was like, how do I even come across and offer that? But yeah. Wow. There's incentives. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I don't think this human organic compost com compost thing is going to work for tonight's show. So we're going to make, we'll talk about that next week because <clears throat> I do want to get into um, this whole, this whole story of Genevieve and how it happened. So producer Brian, can you load the music? And now our feature presentation. All right. So we have got with us, uh, Genevieve, and, and is Traversy, is that correct? Yes, that's that correct. Okay, nailed it, yes. Wow. <laughs> um, and you are with Lutheran Services of Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, I came across your story on the Independent Tribune uh, newspaper, the local newspaper here in Concord. And you were, it talked about you growing up as a foster child and then your, your journey through that and then what you're doing now. Um, as a foster mom and adopted mom, and then as a um, person that helps facilitate other people becoming foster parents. So can you tell us, just go through your story, tell us about how, how this came to be? So um, I was born in Massachusetts, <laughs> <laughs> lived in Massachusetts, um, and, and I entered into foster care at three years old um, at at the time, my father had left for another woman. Um, I had two older brothers, and they went to go live with my uncle and my aunt. And um, I, my mom couldn't take care of me. She became homeless, addicted. Um, and so I entered into foster care at the age of three. Um, so from the age of three to 18, I had 16 different homes. So... Um, the last That's one, one six, is that right? One six, yeah. Not 16, Goodness. 16. Right, years. but still, like, that's a, a massive amount of, of homes. It is, it is. And, um, you know, I just, I always wondered, you know, would I ever be adopted? I always wondered, is this the final home? Is this the final destination? Um, but unfortunately, at oh. 18, I signed myself out, Um so that's what happens when you age out, you sign yourself out. Now, now they have a lot better um, opportunities and more independent living opportunities for children who age out. Um, but unfortunately, the homeless rate is still over 50% for those that um, age out of the system. Oh, um, wow. Huh. Yeah. So um, at, uh, I was 11. Yeah, I was 11 when um, my last foster home in Massachusetts, um, I then went over state lines to New Hampshire. You can drive Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine <laughs> all in an hour and a half. You guys are right. <laughs> you guys were talking about that earlier. You can drive the whole state. Yes, you can be in the mountains. And the, like, that's why when we moved here, everyone's like, oh, you, we have the mountains in the ocean. I'm like, we did too, <laughs> but we could do it within an hour. Yeah. But yes. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so we, um, I went to New Hampshire, and then um, I stayed in New Hampshire for until I was 18. Um, well, until actually I moved here to North Carolina. 
Um, but yes, foster care definitely um, is a passion of mine. Of course, I lived it. And then after I graduated high school, which first in the family, um, I went on to wow. get my, yeah, my two associates, one in psychology, one in human services, and then my bachelor's in um, individual and group counseling. And then I went on for my master's, but I had my internship left still do to complete that. So um, during my bachelor's degree, they we had to do a final project. And for the final project, I took it a little too far because I kind of tend to go big or go home. Because <laughs> I feel like, what's the point of doing anything in life if you're not going to, you know? So I, um, I started a nonprofit for my project and it was called Lean On Us. And we, what I, we did is we got foster kids together every month and took them places because when you're in foster care, lots of times you don't get to go to places. Like I remember one of my foster homes, they went to Disney World and I had to go to a respite care, which means short term. Oh no. Yeah, and I still have never gone to Disney. Um, so one day, what? one day, I know. I know, but listen, if we had money in our <laughs> bank account, we would send you and your family, but we can't oh, do that. We don't that have that amazing? much money, but, but I would, if I could, that oh, would be awesome. You. It's going <laughs> to, it's going to happen one day and it's going to be like amazing. Amazing. So our youngest is four. I'll get to her in a moment. And my oldest is 22. So none of my kids have ever gone. So, um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I started a nonprofit. Um, and I wanted them to have the opportunity to do that. So we would do fundraisers and all these kinds of different raffles. And I learned how to beg for money for charity to do all this stuff with them because I was like, I don't want this ever coming out of a foster parent's pocket. So mm -hmm. we did like hay rides and, you know, pumpkin picking and barbecues at the lake, just different things. And so we got just to be this like really tight knit family. And so that was part of my healing process of, okay, mm. I went through this stuff and now I'm able to help others. Um, so when we moved south, um, I opened up a dance studio because fitness and dance is also a passion of mine. And um, even though what's funny is, and all that, I always self-taught myself dance. I wasn't dance on and off, but I was never in a place long enough. Um, my mom actually tried to put me in dance for a little bit as a young girl. Um, and I remember her and my aunts would sit on the side and just make a fun of, they would call me double bubble, which cause I was always the bigger girl in the, on the backside yeah. of the class. Cause there were all these little, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I opened up a dance studio and, um, the whole purpose of me doing that was um, just to have donation or I started charging like $5 a class if they could just to help with snacks or whatever the rent for the place. Um, but we would have children, low income, disabilities, uh, foster kids got to come for free. So um, I wanted it to be for those who f felt like they were outcast. Um, so mm. when this new position arised a year, was it last year? So not last December, the December before, so a year and a, right before the pandemic, um, I saw a position open for foster care recruiter. And I was like, oh, it just like really jumped out at me. And so I applied and, and I got it and I, I felt torn because I knew I couldn't work full time and do that and mm -hmm. raise my children and be a wife. And sure. so, um, so I let my studio go, um, but we're still in contact. But now I am a foster care recruiter for Lutheran Family Services, where I get to now find families um, and be that first person they meet to um, then do their foster parent into adoption. So it's amazing. Um, I mean, it, it's, it started in the beginning of COVID. It's been a little... Um, you have to be creative, you know, and obviously yeah. living in a time we have internet and all, you know, so that's helped. But now I get to go full on, like tomorrow night, I get to go to a high Tom's game and get to set up there. So it's cool. Cause now I get to go out and today I got to go to wet and wild and, and <laughs> nice. um, I don't know if you know, <laughs> Greensboro. Yep. Yep. So yep. to get them to um, help set up with an event and hang the flyers and stuff there. So, I love being able to be that voice and just 
uh, educate people on how much it's needed, um, not to make anyone feel bad or guilty, mm -hmm. but to really just educate them that there's so many children out there that just need a home, even if it's just for a week, you know, you can be that respite for the week. That's what we do right now because we have a okay. lot of kids. Um, we fostered our youngest, started two and a half years ago, and we adopted her uh, October in 2019. She was the one in the beginning. I don't know if you saw her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Producer Brian, do you have a question? Well, I was just saying, you know, if they're 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 you're recruiting in these these places, you just need to get them to send you to Disney World to recruit down there, right? Right. Work trip. <laughs> Unfortunately, I only cover the triad. Um, oh. Even like your area, I we have recruiters in yeah. in Concord, <laughs> and we call it Concord up north, Concord and um, yeah. Charlotte. Um, but it, that would be um, a different area. But oh, yes, okay. we would love to go to Disney and just be like, oh yeah. <laughs> There's, there's people <laughs> from the triad there. at Disney World. You yeah, talk to them I think of too. that like when missionaries yeah. go to Hawaii to yeah. be missionaries. I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I see you. Yeah, right. <laughs> Can you give us just? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, our our show evidently per Twitch is global, but in North Carolina, w like, what are the numbers that we're looking at for children <sighs> ballpark? All right. So the last I saw. I, and I, it could change, um, but this sure. is two months ago that I checked on it. But I believe it was forty four thousand. Um, so yeah, it's up there. It was it was pretty high. Um, and right now, it's more. I would say it's like mm, over sixty percent is teenagers right now, where it used to be only newborn. Like not only, but like. 70% right. was newborn because of the, um, you know, kids being born with parents using. So, um, I mean, that's still an epidemic that's going on, but, yeah. um, the, the, the youth because of the group homes that are closing or the youth, uh, teenagers that are being raised by, um, grandparents that can't handle them being mm. home all day now, you know what I mean? Yeah. Stuff like that. So, um, or the runaways or they become depressed and in the hospital and, you know, need, um, therapeutic care. There's different levels of foster care. So, yeah. um, but yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a lot of kids in the system right now. Um, and, and I'm sure that's going to even compound more, I think with COVID, um, oh, yeah and during covid i mean that yeah it was it was kind of weird at first though because it was quiet at first and we're mm -hmm. like where are all the kids well when school went back even just part time that's when we got flooded because no one was reporting the abuse yeah. so yeah yeah and and i don't know the reason why part of the reason why i have you on the show one you, you have an incredible story and i love that and we love like championing you know people especially underdogs that have you know come through and said i've done this and you know and and now i'm doing this right. but also i'm a foster dad too and so i, like I have it. yeah i've got a little one i'm trying to adopt at this point so <clears throat> fostering is huge for me and even uh, next month we're doing respite you know we need a break and so yeah. we're uh <clears throat> we're the wife and i are getting away and we're using respite so um you know it, it's it's near and dear to my heart so i want to highlight fostering and the importance of that. And I know these guys get tired of me talking about it, but it's just such a need <laughs> for, for that. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's always, there's always that, but, but here's what I really want to get the, the point across is even if you don't feel like you want to go through the foster system and, and become foster parents, which I kind of want to talk about the, the process here, but you could do a whole bunch of other things. Even in your article, you're mentioning, you know, you could just donate some things. You could donate some time and, and things. What are some things that people that don't have to go through all the paperwork can do to help the foster care kids and the parents and the whole system? Yeah. So, okay. Donate in time. Like you just said, for instance, I am recruiting my kids tomorrow to help me at the game because I don't have anyone to help me bring my mm -hmm. tables and my flyers and my posters and everything I need. And we, we got a bunch of little baseball squishy balls to hand out, you know, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, you want to help, but you don't, you can't foster right now. And it's not feasible. 
come help me, you know, advocate, come help me tell people that, you know, there's an options here. So that's one mm-hmm. that you can do. Um, hang up my flyers at your business, local businesses. Um, we, I'm, I'm in Lexington, but the triad is what I cover. And we just in Lexington alone in Thomasville, like they have amazing small businesses that are like, yeah, let's, let's do this. Put your flyers, put your pamphlets. I'll talk to people. I'm like, that's amazing. So, um, I just need more businesses to do that. It's harder to get, Mm -hmm. um, obviously franchises and the, and the bigger people to, to agree to do that. Um, have invite me to your church invite me to your cookout say you know come talk invite me to whatever you're involved in you know right here on your podcast then let me tell you how to do this so um and then if you want to donate physical things i never ask for people to donate money um gift cards are great like Mm -hmm. It's a it's a long story. I know we we're, we don't have all the time, but this past oh, no. Christmas we love stories. <laughs> well, this past Christmas we um we usually we're a nonprofit, so DSS is not a nonprofit, but we still get government funded for um, the foster parents. But we pay them a, a stipend every month, you know, to foster, um, and it's different with different levels and different ages. So if you're a therapeutic foster parent, you get paid a lot more than if you're a foster parent um, that does, a child doesn't have any special needs. So um, they get paid, but it's not a lot. You know, it's not like, oh, so for Christmas is, of course, we want to help them and for birthdays or whatever. So we usually have churches that will help us, you know, with these kids. Like, I'm sure you've heard of Angel Train, stuff like that. We have a system mm-hmm. like that. Um, but this year, no lie, it was three days before Christmas. We kept trying to get a hold of these places going, these the church that was supposed to help, and they couldn't because their numbers were so low and they didn't have the funding. Yeah. And so my supervisor and I were going, okay, what do we do? So we were just going to use our own money and say, okay, we'll just not get expensive stuff. Like we're not going to buy a kid an Xbox, but maybe we can buy a couple shirts, you know, or whatever they need. Um, So I just put out there on Facebook, like, where can I shop locally that is, you know, not expensive? And, you know, people are telling me all these bargain stores and stuff. No yard sales during Christmas time. So (laughs) (laughs) Um, so one of the ladies that I I, um, worked with, with the foster kids up north when I did my nonprofit, um, she private messaged me and she's like, hey, how many kids are there? What do they need? Da, da, da. And I was like, uh, we have this many and why are you asking? So she had a contact that donated $250 per child. Per oh, target. wow. That's great. And of course, we're not going to just give a kid a $250 gift card. So <laughs> we got to be out two days before Christmas and go shopping. And we had five, you call, you guys call them buggies. I call them shopping carts five carts full of toys and clothes wow. and shoes. And it was amazing. So I have pictures of that and it was just such, it was such a blessing just to be a part of that. Um, and we got to even make baskets for all the foster parents with the remaining. Oh, wow. So yeah. That's really cool. So it's stuff like that. We can always yeah. do stuff like that because I mean, that was last minute and by the grace of God, we were able to, to do that. Um, and then another thing is backpacks. Kids tend mm-hmm. to come into care with a trash bag or even a Walmart bag or a food line, you know, whatever they can grab real quick because it's not like, okay, honey, you have time to do all this. No, you need to go. So um, a backpack is much better for a child to be able to transport their stuff. I remember in foster care, I would never even unpack my, I had a big black trash bag in the corner of my room. I would never unpack it because that was like my dresser. Like I just lived out of that bag because I didn't know, is this home going to be a week, two weeks, a few months? Yeah. Like what is it going to be? So. Yeah. yeah. And, and people don't understand some of these kids, <clears throat> they come home from school or they even get picked up at school <clears throat> right? and they don't have any option. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> and so they're, hold on. And so they're just, you know, carrying around this garbage bag. And how do you 
thing that that makes the kid feel. I mean, you, you obviously know, like, like the damage that that does. Yes, exactly. Um, and so one of the things that we made sure our foster kids have are suitcases and, you know, make sure that they have that so that they feel like that this is part of them and that they're not garbage. Um, and that they're more than that. So, um, yeah, yeah. Then just stuff like that is huge. Yeah. So that's, that's what I ask for people to, um, do get educated. Um, don't just think that, um, these kids are all going just to be messed up for the rest of their lives. Trauma, it, it affects in different ways. And yes, it comes yeah. up in different ways too. Um, but it's, I mean, I can't tell you details because of, you know, privacy, but sure. like there's one child right now that is not the same child that they were when a few months ago because yeah. of love, like because someone invested in them and just didn't treat them as though they were, you know, to be pushed off to the side. So, yeah. and bring them to Disney. Like if they want to go to <laughs> Disney with you, that's what I always encourage. Like um, if you, you know, if you do foster, just make them feel a part of your family, you know, not like yeah. someone else. So. And I think recently the, the, the state law has changed for, for foster care and, and recently within like the past five years where it's not mandated, but it it allows you to have way more freedom to treat that kid like it's your own kid so yeah. that you can take them to Disney and not have to go through all this red tape or get them outside of the state for 72 hours and not have to, you know, get all these checks and balances and whatnot and all this paperwork signed out and stuff. It, right. it allows you to have way more freedom to treat that kid like he's your kid and and so that's been huge for for us one thing I, I also want to point out is you mentioned like the parents the foster parents get paid uh for having a foster kid guys it's not that much so people think oh they're just doing it for the money there there could be some, you know families that are doing it but at the end of the day it's not enough <laughs> to to try to get a full-time job off of it so just from personal experience you can't make a job out of that and I, I know some people probably have, you know, it, it's very few that, that 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 happens with. So, yeah, it's true. And, you know, we have a lot of um, teen parents and, and I was mm. one. I, I became pregnant at 15 and I, I said that in my article that you read. Um, and so they they come with a child, too, but you don't get paid for their child. You get paid for them. But mm -hmm. lots of times you end up helping with their baby in that cost as well. So yeah. stuff like that doesn't get allotted. Um, when I was a teen mom, I never asked. I worked three jobs in high school. So I was always, um, which, you know, I was like, how did I even, I guess teenagers don't need sleep because I never slept in high school. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I wanted to break the cycle. So I just made sure that I wasn't going to get, go on welfare and, you know, try to, just continue like drugs have never, I mean, I tried the green stuff and it, it does the opposite for me. I, I, I think it's cause my mom did speed when she was pregnant with me, but like mm -hmm. I'm naturally hyper. And I, I just, <laughs> everyone I, at weddings are like, dude, to my husband, how much did your wife drink? And then he's like, no, <laughs> she's naturally like that. She just, <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. So I just always <laughs> tell people, trust me, there's no, issues there <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah so I just I wanted to make that point that there is a lot of teen foster children um and you know it's because they're looking for love like in the end result if someone's going to give you attention and it's not from your biological yeah. parents then you search other places so it, it never occurred to me like teen moms in foster care like mm. that this kind of blew my I just you know I think about like teenagers yeah for whatever reason being in the system but not that's just an extra compound <laughs> kind right. of thing right it's, uh, right it's, and it's, really it's, sad, but. it's hard because there as a foster mom so we had we had one for respite and we have a beautiful relationship now with them um and i am just so glad that i had that opportunity to share with them what happened to me and now mm. we still have that relationship and just to to under to have gone through it, I can I could know how to react to her. But to never have gone through that, it's hard to relate. And how 
to not parent their baby too and parent them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Allow them to try to do it is the hard part. So, Mm. yeah. 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 So if somebody is interested in fostering, what's, what's the process for them to go through? So yeah, contact me or um, in your area, I would just uh, point them to the Charlotte recruiter and um, there's classes, I would say quarterly um, because our classes are 10 weeks and um, our classes just ended or they're about to end this week and they're going to start back in August. So we have like July off to finish their paperwork and get them licensed. (laughs) So yeah, it's 10 weeks, um, two classes a week. Um, it's, we usually do a Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday. Um, th- we just finished up our last one, last Zoom. So we're actually going to be in person again. Yay. Nice. Um, but at the same time, it was so convenient for people to do their classes right. online. People were in their bed in their pajamas. And you know, <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, nobody wants to see that. But uh, I mean, you see it at Walmart. So yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> um, so yeah, we, um, 10 classes, sorry, my kids are waving at me asking to bake croissants. Um, it's, just, they must know you guys talk about food a lot. Like, yeah. Just a little bit longer and we'll get those croissants <laughs> out there for you. <clears throat> um, so the 10 weeks of classes, you know, we do the application together beforehand. We meet, okay. sit down. I do the, um, the, not a complete background check, but like a, a background check of, okay, do I think this person is right. you know, fit to even go further to start the classes? Um, do they look like they're financially stable? You don't have to be rich, just enough right. to, you know, um, do they look like they need therapy themselves beforehand? Do they have, you know, oh. um, I don't know. Did they just get out of jail last week or, you know, stuff like that. So um, they go through me for that. And then the classes, and then after the classes, you do the home study. Some people call them different names, but it's where you sit down in the home and you go over your, your life story. And um, then you get your prior inspection, make sure the home is safe and then send off all your paperwork, lots of documents. You got to get your physical and everything like that. Um, and it sounds like a lot and there is a lot of paperwork, mm-hmm. but the whole process is between three and nine months. I used to say three and six months, but because of COVID, it pushed it back a little. Um, so yeah. And then our, our station is in black mountain um, and they license and send it back. Um, Charlotte would probably be in Charlotte. So that would yep. be a little quicker. Then yep. you license. Oh, background check too, fingerprints and everything. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it is a lot. I mean, you've got to want it to do it to, to make yeah. that happen. You've been through so, it, you know. Oh, yeah, it's it's quite a lot. Yeah. Is there any questions from from you guys or in the chat or anything that you that we need to uh, talk about? No questions from the chat. OK, you guys. I think Brian's still thinking about food. <clears throat> no, I'm, uh, now he's one. These conversations like. Every time I'm like, I wish I had more resources, you know, yeah, to give or to whatever it is, time. You know, anytime I hear these stories like this, I'm just like, yeah. what can I, what do you, what do you want? What do I have that you can have? <laughs> like, just take it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I know you guys are in a different area, but you definitely, you know, if you know of local businesses that are willing to put things up, you could let me know. Um, you could, you know, send people my way. I think you have my info, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. And we'll have all that information on the website. Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> and on and, our show notes. Yep. Right. And I, I am not throwing this in for, for me, but um, for like, because I feel that way, even as a recruiter, like I get it, like I want to do more um, and not even, I wish I could foster like long-term right now, but um, I, I love writing and I don't get a lot of time to do it, but when I do, I, I do it. And I'm a part of um, this writing group. And anyways, I went to a conference last week on writing and um, I really feel like I was an amateur, but the publishers said they want my proposal, which is 
huge and I haven't even announced wow. it to like a lot of my friends yet. So if they're watching this later, cause a lot of them <laughs> are like, oh, I'm going to catch it later. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited because it's going to be um, devotions for foster kids and their foster parents. And it's going to oh. um, have a devotional part and then like a physical workout part with it. But it's also going I, for every one I sell, which sell, you know, I'm whatever. I'm not doing it for the money. I'm going to give it away for free for the foster family. So oh. I'm super excited. So when that comes out, y'all can help promote that too because absolutely that that's be, a great yeah. idea yeah yeah i'm excited yeah, we'll, about have, that. we'll have you back on and you can promote that and, as well and, and oh, we'll awesome. talk about that then yeah so it's um the day after my birthday august 1st they want the my proposal which is super nice exciting. so i'm having it critiqued on saturday which is what two days yeah in two days wow. <laughs> Holy cow. yeah so I'm super excited about that. So that's what, another thing. Like, so I try to be creative on how I can help, what I can do. Um, but for me, it's just part of my healing. You know, I, I know if people have gone through other things, you know, they are able to use that, you know, so. Yeah, it's amazing just going through the training and then going, just doing my own digging and whatnot, just what we've learned about trauma and, and, the, especially in the foster and adoptive world, but just in normal raising children, like it's insane. What we, yeah. You know, all the statistics and then how we can better cope with, you know, people that have gone through trauma. It's, it's awesome. It really is. It's, it is. It's great. And you can watch some cool movies. Like um, everyone's like, well, oh, how can I know or watch or read, you know, even if I don't want to read a book, can I watch a movie? I like, I'm like instant family. That's a great movie mm -hmm. to watch. Um, yeah. I just watched The Ride. It just came out this year. Have you have you seen that? Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. It's a real. It's a true story. And oh, what's his name? John. Mm, John. Of course, I forget his name. Um, but he is. Um, he's like a Tony Hawk of bicycles. Um, so he was this champion, and he grew up in foster care. Um, was in detention center up until he was a teenager where he was adopted it's just it's a true story so it's really cool okay. to see that um another one i just learned about because um the publisher wants me to ask him for the endorsement and i'm like jimmy wayne have you ever heard of him he's from north carolina he's the country mm. singer Okay. I think I have. It yeah. Sounds like a country yeah. singer. i think i have if you listen to his music you're like oh um yeah. So, cause I was like, do I know him? So anyways, I started reading his book, um, last week and yeah. And of course I, I, the part of his book, he's, he actually seen like in his trauma, he's seen someone get murdered in front of him. And like the murder was so gruesome and I'm here at the dentist about to get my teeth filled and I'm like, Oh, and like, he's coming at me with the thing. I'm like, Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to put my book away. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, but Jimmy Wayne, that's another one to really um I I I've been watching him on Facebook, his daily devotions and stuff. So he's really cool. That's cool. Yeah, just to get educated, that's another thing that will help. So Yeah, absolutely. One of the things you said in your article that <clears throat> that you just didn't feel wanted mm -hmm. and just just know that you are loved. And I know that you know that, but you are loved and you are wanted. And the kids and people that are listening as well, like you are loved and you are wanted. You may need yeah. to hear that today is you're not alone. You've got people here. And Genevieve, whatever we could do to help support you and help support Lutheran services, um, just let us know because we'd love awesome. to promote it. We'd love to help. Yeah. Um, and and we're here. And I mean, I've, I'm in Charlotte, but man, I've got some awesome resources here for for fostering um uh, we had foster village with Be becky santoros on i don't know if you've heard of foster village no those folks are down. incredible yeah mm -hmm. she was on the show earlier but with one of the things i love about them is once they figure out uh that you're having a foster kid a placement uh those they'll, they'll show up with a backpack already to go and it's filled with that kid's, um, you know, 
pajamas, clothes, toys, everything's ready to go for that kid. And they just drop it off and leave. Um, and they do some really awesome work. So it's Foster Village in Charlotte. Um, so we'll connect with that. There was some really cool stuff that happened around Christmas and we could talk about that off air, but, um, man, it's whatever we could do to help support. I'm a huge fan of fostering, obviously. So whatever we could do to help, let us know. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. That's awesome. We have a program called I, it's not me. It's a, um, nonprofit. They're called IMJ3 and they do the similar things with the backpack and they oh, cool. do a hundred dollar Walmart card um, per nice. child that comes into foster care. So I think those, those are just amazing because those places help literally their community right there. So absolutely, that is so great. So yeah. If you know, like places, yeah, yeah, like I just, um, we just had a, a camp called Windshape and okay. in Thomasville and all the kids were able to go for free anyone in foster care and it, wow. it's a pricey camp so I'm looking into that kind of stuff too so if you know of any because I'm like sure. we have the rest of the summer like I want to <laughs> I want to be able to get them to do fun things you know yeah. and of course there's the, the splash pads and the community pools but so I do a, a newsletter every month so if you hear of anything um, okay. I'm working on my July newsletter right now so okay very cool. Uh, I also, lastly, uh, want to celebrate you had a, is it a high school student that just graduated? Yes. Yes. Valedictorian. Valedictorian. Good yeah. job. Way to go. <laughs> I know. I was like in tears. He was doing his speech and like this kid busted his butt. Like he was working like 30 hours a week and doing school and he has a beautiful wow. girlfriend and um he already he did the have you heard of dual enrollment where you go to school and yeah. college so yep. um he has one more semester left he actually just walked by um tell him we said hi <laughs> he just went in his room he's 18 you know <laughs> at that age. oh so um he yeah so he did uh, all that and kept up his grades obviously but during that time he got his criminal justice certification so that's all wow. you need to become a police officer before, you know, the boot, boot camp or whatever, BBLT. Yeah, right. Um, so, but he's only 18. So what he's going to do, he's up for his next semester, he added EMT classes. So he's going to be an oh, wow. EMT for the next three years before. Yeah. So I'm like so that's proud. Cool. <laughs> I know. Way to go. Uh, so yeah, he's What's like, his name? Do you want to give him a shout out? Yeah, Caleb Traversy. So. Way to go, Caleb. Yeah. And my Good oldest, job. he's in L.A., so, um, oh, wow. I'm proud of him too. Cause he's at lower Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> no, he does not like country. Oh, he's okay. in the middle of LA, <laughs> uh, but he, um, he's a music producer. So, oh, wow. I'm proud of wow. him too. So he's, he's almost 22. So that's the one I had very young and everyone mistakes him as my boyfriend, wherever we go. So <laughs> he gets he gets really embarrassed. He's like, "Mom, I'm like, I know." <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah. Well, Genevieve, thank you so much for coming on the show. We're going to post all your info on the on the awesome. show notes. But where can people get a hold of you if they need that? Um. So G Traversy at lscarolinas.net. Not dot com. Okay. Dot net. Because I got that wrong. I was like, "Why is this not working?" Um. And then um. I, I give out my phone number on everything, so I don't know. I mean, are you cool That's if fine. I give it out there? If you feel it's all my business cards, yeah. So it's um, I kept my number from up north because it's what I brought back with me. Um, so it's six zero three is the area code five five three five three nine zero. Okay. So they can reach me there as well. They can call or text, and I get lots of telemarketers anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So. Or I'm on Facebook, Instagram, or okay. me. I don't, I don't tweet. I'm not a Twitter, and I'm not a tweaker. So I heard you guys talking about tweeters <laughs> earlier. <laughs> you know, I was telling producer Brian yesterday. I've gotten addicted to TikTok way more than I should. Oh my goodness, I haven't even started that because as a dancer, oh. I could be like that could be bad for me. <laughs> yeah, it's not Dance? good. Like it's there's so much food. Oh, and it's food that you stuff. Want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dances you got to be TikTok careful yet. though because there's some. What Not did you yet. Say? I can. Okay. Though. All right. 
I said there's a lot of food and things on that, but at, be, at the beginning, you got to be careful because the algorithms don't know you yet, and they're just assuming that you want to see stuff. Right. So you get a couple of days pass through that, and you're you're doing good. That's so. why I didn't do it because my my kids wanted it in the very very beginning. I was like, okay, and I was like, oh no, we're not doing this because my, my son was like, mom, and I was like, stop looking at that. <laughs> So yeah, that's why you don't take yeah. her. Well, <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you again so much for coming on the show. Yes, thank you for having me. I am Absolutely. so grateful that you um, are are advocating as well and being a foster parent. And hey, guys, you guys can magic man and producer Brian. You guys, we can always use you as foster dads if you want. So it's never <laughs> too late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seventy-eight year old. So I mean, it's never, literally, never too late. Like, oh wow, <laughs> very cool. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great night. You as well. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. She's got a, a fantastic story. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll have the article oh, yeah. online. Just the stuff that she she's gone through. Um, just personally, story. yeah, it's <sighs> it's insane. Everything's working against you, and you still like that. That's that. I don't know. That's a testament to her resolve. You know, after after everything she went through, and she was determined Absolutely. not to, you know, let it be her the, her whole story. You know. Yeah, and her yeah, the story that I mean, they have online. It's definitely worth the time you take to read it. Definitely more than worth it. Yeah, I mean, I'm having a, uh, I'm struggling with a two year old at 43. Like, I couldn't imagine a newborn at 15. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't even think about that. That'd just be so tough. So, yeah, yeah. But she did it, man. She's doing it and crushing it. And so, um, I'm grateful that she was on the show. Yeah. All right, you guys seem sad. What's wrong? I'm it's smiling. You still processing? Topic. You know, it's a heavy topic. It is a heavy topic. topic. It's, it's yeah, a really you can. heavy topic. Yeah. You think no, about I understand. Just, I think a lot of us get, can get kind of, we get self involved. It's our own, what, we think about our own world and our own issues. Mm-hmm. And we forget about the people who aren't in our situation a lot. It's easy yeah. to forget, right? About, yeah. you know, you got foster kids, you got homelessness, you got, abuse whatever you know there's so many yeah. things that are happening in the world it's easy just to you know to kind of ignore it you know yeah so and it's, it's easy to feel overwhelmed like well what can i do so i'm just going to stay siloed and not do anything yeah but i do know yeah, yeah. But, and, and you don't have to, and I'm not trying to like, oh, look at me, I'm a foster dad. So please, 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 if you're getting that idea, that's not the case. I'm just trying to help use this platform to say, this is a real issue. And so for me, it's like, yeah, I could get, you know, overwhelmed with homelessness and domestic abuse. And I got out of that whole political crap last year. So I'm not even dealing with that anymore. That's, I can't do anything. So, uh, you know, but what can I do here and what am I passionate about? And I'm not telling you guys or you or the audience, like Mm -hmm. to, to get involved in foster care, but find something that you're passionate about to make the world better and just do that, you know, whatever it is. And just slowly but surely you'll eventually make the world a little bit of a better place. And I remember in Boy Scouts, when we would go somewhere, the whole thing is like, leave the place better than when you left it. Right. And that's my whole deal. Like, I want to leave this world better because I was here. And so if I could do that through fostering or whatever, find your passion and do it. Yeah. Well said. So, well said. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Well, gentlemen, um, it's been fun. It's been real. The wife is coming back on Saturday. So I've got two days to clean this this mess up at the house. <laughs> <laughs> so I should probably get to work on that. Uh, there's so much laundry. It's so much laundry. I didn't realize I underestimated just, the time it's going to take you, to do right? this laundry. Or, or did they leave you some? Is that what happened? They left me some. So okay. like I'm doing my laundry and then like all the other laundry. Oh, little so, people laundry is already terrible. Little people laundry, big people laundry, little, bigger like, people laundry. You, know, you do one load of little people laundry. It takes like three hours to put away because there's so many pieces. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. 
So, and then uh, I was showing, I, don't, I hope Jess isn't watching, but I tried to stain our deck. I'll put pictures up on Facebook about oh, when she gets back about how horrible it looks. You, but You stained it. Or I, the, the back steps. It. It's oh, stained. I stained it. It's stained. It's stained. It's one hundred percent stained. Yep. It doesn't look good, but it's it looks like a hot mess. So I got to figure out how to goal? fix you that. You stained the deck. You didn't say you were going to do an expert's <laughs> job, right? So, I mean, there you go. It looks like poop, but I stained it. Yeah, I did stained. my job. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I I'm just I got to stay in my lane. I can't do anything new. I'm horrible at trying new things. So there's that. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much. Uh, again, if you're listening from, from our, our tweeters, tweeter, twitchers, whatever whatever they are, thank you for tuning in. Um, what are we calling call them? I'm calling twitcheroos. Twitcheroos. I like that. Though I kind of want cereal after saying that. So maybe I'll do that. <laughs> <Just> marshmallows, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in uh, for to the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast. And as always, keep looking up. You're listening 